Hey, it's Wednesday evening. It's time for us to get together for a few minutes, look into the word, be challenged again by something that hopefully will stick in our minds and in our hearts and be lived out. So I'm hoping some of you are going to jump on and join me. I love seeing your names pop up. I love seeing that you're there and uh, ready to go with uh, tonight's little lesson. And it's been uh, an, an interesting day, a little sprinkly here and there, a little cloudy. I know some of you may have been like us, and we ran outside last night again and took a look, uh, trying to see the planets aligning out there and all of that. All we saw was a cloudy sky. We didn't even see the moon last night here, so I don't know. But there's been some nice pictures, and uh, we assured each other that somebody somewhere would get great pictures of that with a telescopic camera and a whole official setup, and we just enjoyed their pictures, but we tried. So that's what's been going on. Um, I see the Realmes. Pam, I'm excited that your mom is better. And that got figured out. So that was one of those moments I'm sure was difficult. But uh, again, we put our trust in the Lord. And he did take care of those things. Helen, I don't know if you saw things up there but uh, in, by your place uh, at Aaron's. But um, Man, there was too cloudy to see any planets, and it got pretty chilly last night, so we just let the experts do that. Yeah, Joyce is jumping on now. Lucy is listening in. She is always listening in. She never, she's such a quiet little thing. She's like some of you at church where I don't hear anything but a peep out of you most of the time, so, but that's okay. Listening well is a good thing. We've got several things I want to talk about tonight, and it's time to get started, so we're going to pray right off. It's 6.45 according to my uh, phone, so let's uh, just pray together. Father, we just ask you to uh, give us a nugget of truth from your word, uh, a way to remember a principle from scripture that helps us to live more like you, to serve you better, to do better, and uh, to live uh, victorious lives in the midst of a crazy changing world. So we give you thanks in advance for teaching us something tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're going to continue as well. I know praying for others. Well, Cheryl and Sunny have joined us. Some others I'm sure are going to be hopping on. So tonight I want to talk to you a little bit about strength. Now, when I talk about strength, uh, you know, there's all kinds of like people who run and run and run. And so their legs are extremely strong or, you know, there's people, some of you that float around and do Pilates and sit on things and strengthen your core and that's so good for you um some of you know who you are and you chuckle because you just pay anything to see me try to sit on one of those and strengthen my core but hey we'll see one day um but basically what i'm talking about now is good old-fashioned strength that used to be tested at old picnics um we used to have big old church picnics. We'd have adventures with as family gathered together. Um, at our school, at grade school, we used to do this off and on. There was always a contest. Now, I'm going to leave you there trying to figure out what that contest was that was so popular, still is in places, but it really was a true test of your strength. Now, when I talk about that, some people have all kinds of ways. Some people use weights and they work out and they get their strength going up here, you know, and they get all the exercises going and they use weights. Other people say, oh, I know. And they get these things and they work on that. I will feel that tomorrow already, just that much. Okay, so I don't know about some of you, but we just don't have it there as much anymore. So it makes it very difficult for that contest I'm talking about. The rest of us, some of it is strength in our legs. And so we work at th we can work at things. Maybe you figured it out now. I got a small sample just because you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's called it's called a tug of war. And you get two groups of people on each side of a big rope. Now at school, they used to have a rope that was, you know, at least that thick or more. I mean, a big old thick rope. Uh, this is the best I could do right now in my garage. So here's this rope, and someone, one team gets on one side, one's on the other. And then usually there was, for a lot of times, a rope across. Uh, there would be a little bandana or a ribbon you would hang on or something colored 
uh, something to hang in the middle and then the two sides pull and it moves it back and forth and people dig in and you get the you get the big bubba that gets in the back and they wrap it around themselves and they're in the back of the line then you get some more people in the middle and you get a really strong guy up front who digs his heels in and you're trying your team you're trying to keep from being pulled over the line and the people that take this really seriously they actually make like a trench and fill it and pour water in there and make a big old muddy pit in the middle so when you finally get drug across now the nice competitions it means just at that center point when the ribbon on the rope from the middle goes over and the other team wins whichever team the when it gets really ugly the competition is that big mud pit down the middle and then you get drug into it so you get drug into the mud in the middle you know you're a loser it's all about strength it's about deciding how to position people. It's about how to get a good grip on the rope so it doesn't just give you a big old rope burn in your hands. It's all about how you want to hang on to it, onto the rope. You know, some people have a whole technique where they wrap it around their arms and they get on it and they're in their hands. And, oh, that could be dangerous. Uh, there's all different ways you can put your laying down or leaning back or however you want to do it that's different or stronger than the other team. It's all about that back and forth pull of the two ropes between the teams. It's a perfect picture of what happens in us. You realize we have an old sinful nature that wants to tug and wants to pull us back right straight through the mud pit into the old sinful way of life. It's constant battle. It's constant pulling. We're we feel like we're tugging. We feel like we're in the competition of the tug of war for our spiritual life. There's other things. Sometimes the other tug is old friendships, old relationships, old buddies that used to do the old bad things with us. And we hang around with them and we feel that tug. Uh, sometimes it's a place. And we act a certain way and we do certain things when we go to that place. And it tugs at us. When we're there, the tug is so strong. When the farther we are away from it, the longer time we're away from it, it seems like we're getting a handle on it. It's that tug of war. So here it is. I, I was going to have Joyce and I kind of play this out, but I didn't have a long enough rope. And Joyce refuses to get out of her recliner and do tug of war with me. Mm -hmm. She said, no. She's over there shaking her head. No, she will not do this with me. So if you want to act it out at home, you can do that on your own. But Paul constantly writes in the epistles. Those are the letters he wrote to the churches. We call it more of the New Testament beyond the Gospels. He began to write these letters to places because he saw they were in a tug of war. Would the people remain close to God? Would the people continue to serve and love God and obey God? Would they do that? Or would the tug of war from the world and its influences pull them over into the muddy pit again of sin? That's what was happening. So they had to deal with the fact that they haven't, we have what's called our old nature, our old sinful nature. And they had to understand that that whole addiction, some people have addictions, some people, like I said, have bad relationships that tug them in the tug of war. And sometimes they were finding that they were losing the tug of war, staying on God's side. And God's side was getting pulled into the mud pit. They were wanting to do the right thing. But the addiction, the bad relationships, the culture of this world was pulling them back into the mud pit of sin. So they had to learn something. They had to learn that on our side of the rope, in our life, it's all about who has the best team, who has the strongest team. Whenever you're in a tug of war, you want to figure out, I always say, where's the big Bubba? I want to have him on the end of my rope. And then I want to have a bunch of go-getters and very athletic, strong people. And then I want to have someone up front who knows how to dig their heels in and hold on and begin to pull back enough in the right way to give me the win. Well, who's on our side of the rope? We have to realize that we have God on our side of the rope. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? 
He gives us everything we need to win the tug of war for our soul. He gives us, the Holy Spirit gives us the power in our mind not to go in the wrong thoughts. He gives us the ability and the strength and the protection and the guidance to pull in the right direction. He gives us all of the, um, what do I want to say, skills that are needed to win the tug of war. He's given us the Holy Spirit to do that. God, the God, the creator of the entire universe is on our side. And his direction is the best and his is the way. So unless you totally let go of the rope, oh, and stop being on God's side, you're going to win every time. He gives us the ability to win out against every temptation. He says, I will give you that kind of strength. Scripture talks to us about all these ways that if we stay faithful, we hang on to the rope with him and stay on his side of the tug of war, we will always win because he will win. You say, well, but I felt a temptation. Mm, not if you were hanging onto the rope and in faith trusting him. Let's be honest here. You can't blame God. You can't blame God when you mess up and turn back to sin. It means you let go of the rope. You've seen that. You've seen people try to, kids try to pull a rope against each other. And the very favorite thing is let go and then watch the other team fall down. Well, you can let go but you're not going to win the tug of war that way. The only way you're going to win the tug of war for your soul is to hang on with God. And that's hanging on in faith, persevering. He talks a lot about that. All the e evil that tugs against you, all the old habits that tug on you, all the old friendships, relationships, all the addictions, all those things will always be tugging, but you will always win the tug of war if you hang on with God. And most of the time, you're going to lose by letting go of God's side of the rope with him because those old things will pull you back. That's always going to be there. So it's your choice. How do you want to end the tug of war, drug down in the mud pit of sin again? Or do you want to be on the winning side with God on your side, giving you the ultimate win? Let me give you some scripture verses. You say, how do I get that? 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3 says, But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. He gives us the strength. He is the intellectual. He is the that knows. He is the skilled one. He is the powerful Bubba at the end. He is the one who can say no, and it means no, and yes, and it means yes, that decisive one that digs in their heels in the front. He gives you everything you need in the tug of war because he's faithful. The Lord is faithful. He'll never leave us or forsake us. Then you read Philippians 4.13. So the Philippians were struggling. They were in a culture where people kept trying to get them to worship false gods and idols. And they, and they had all kinds of bizarre things that they did. And he's saying, stay strong, stay strong. Here's a verse, you people in Philippi. That's the name of the town. So the people in Philippi were called Philippians. And he says, Philippians 4.13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. You see, he gives you the strength to pair up with him and the two of you will always come out victorious. That's just how it is. Now, hang on a minute, because not only Philippians 4.13, but the next verse is Ephesians 6.10. Ephesians 6.10. When I look at Ephesians 6.10, I look at that and I read, oh, the people in Ephesus. It was a huge center for the worship of false idols. And they would push people. In fact, there were whole marketplaces that sold paraphernalia that goes with those idols in Ephesus. And they were so pushing against the believers in the early Christian church that he says, here, you Ephesians, because that's the name of the people that lived in Ephesus. You Ephesians, I'm going to tell you this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. You're never going to have the strength to win the tug of war of your soul. There are people who are trying to win the tug of war, tug of war between good and evil. They're going to try to win that by their own efforts. 
Bible says it won't happen. It only happens through the strength that comes from Christ. Jesus, what he's done for us is the first part of the tug of war, and that is to bring us to a place where he forgives our sins. But we can't do it on our own. It's all on Jesus. Then he says, now you need to continue to live this life, this new life. You need to continue to do that in this crazy, evil world. And we're all whining and complaining because, well, I know, but they were my friends. And I did have good times with, and I enjoyed watching that program. And I like that kind of internet stuff. And, I like, and we can whine and whine and whine in weakness. Or we can say, okay, wait a minute. I'm going to win this tug of war. And keep my life and my thought life and my way of life and my actions pure and holy before God. And the only way I can do it is with God's help and his strength. And his word just said, he is faithful. He will give us the strength to do that. So I don't know about you. Oh, I dropped it on the floor. But I can't think of a better person to win a tug of war for my soul with than God. He will help me. He is with me. He gives me the strength to win in that tug of war. So the next time you start whining and making excuses and point, pointing blame at your friends that made you do it, or you get like an old comedian that used to always say, oh, the devil made me do it. No. No one can make you do it. Fall back into the muddy pit of sin. But you can be drugged back into it if you don't hang on to the rope on the side with God. That's our reminder. That's how we want to be living our lives. Not about you, but... I want to be on God's side. Why? Because I want to win. I want to continue to pull people from the opposite side, get them out of the mud pit and over to God's side. That's why I'm here. That's why he's left me. We need to tell people how to get a hold of the rope with Jesus and win the tug of war for their soul. Father, would you help us be the kind of people who hang on to the rope with you? Know that you are our whole strength. We're just kind of hanging on like the kid who hangs on and doesn't really do much, but they're on the winning side because they got the biggest, strongest, best person. And that's you, God, the biggest, strongest God, the one and only true God hanging on to the side of the rope where I am. So I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that you can help me not be drugged back into the pit of sin, but keep me on the right side. You are the one I want to be on the side of the tug of war with for my soul. And so I'm thankful for that, Lord. Help each of us remember that. And when temptation and things, and we feel that tug strongly in our hearts to rock back into an evil old habit, help us remember, uh-uh, we're not going to be drugged back into that pit in the middle because we've got God on our side. And God, you will give us the strength. You are faithful. You will give us the power to pull away from that sinful lifestyle and continue to walk on the great path you have for us. Thank you for helping us be victorious, not on our own strength, but in your strength. Help us remember that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hopefully that's a quick reminder. Some of you are remembering those old-fashioned picnics and parties and recess games where it was all about tug-of-war. Well, I'm glad I we're on the winning team. Hang on to the rope with Jesus. So I want you to uh, remember that this coming Sunday... We will be, it's Palm Sunday. We're going to be having regular service, 10 o'clock for the kids, 10.30 for the rest of us. You can come 10-ish on and have a cup of coffee and visit. And by 10.30, we all join together for service. The kids and the youth are in there with us as well. So we're looking forward to that. I'm starting a two-part series for Easter. Mm, I was going to tell you what it's called, but I'm not going to say it. Come and find out on Sunday or watch us online. Uh, same thing. And then next Wednesday, we will be back as well right here at the same place online, 645 on Wednesdays. Have a great rest of your week. Hang on to the right side of the rope. Bye.